I select uh, this journal because I want to know the mitochondria energy and the mitochondria mass connections. So in this paper, I explain about the mitochondria energy production and then the mitochondria mass at the same time. All this one is required for the memory formation of the mice. So yeah, and then another word is Anna Hitch. <laughs> Yeah, she chose this uh, paper, and then that was very interesting for me. So I selected this one, 2023 published. Yeah, basically, uh, I don't know exactly any uh, neuronal functions or any neuronal structure. So uh, based on this paper, I, I have studied about the, the neuronal things. So. Uh, in this picture, we know the uh, hippocampus is here. That this hippocampus is important in memory and the navigation functions in humans. And then there is the hippocampus. This hippocampus divided into several uh, several cell lines. One is a CA3 and then CA1, uh, like this one. And then CA1 is important in this paper because there are a lot of mitochondria uh, in CA1. Cell line. This is the, the mitochondria localization in the neuronal cells. You can see that this is a snap uh, tone area. This snap tone area has got a relatively high amount of mitochondria because these snap tones use a lot of ATP to release the vesicles. And then this is a normal neuronal structure, and then that area. Here is a snapton area, and the cell body, neural cell body is here. And then the, this is a neurotransmitter. So uh, in this brain, the, as you know, the mitochondria function in the brain, the function is a neuronal survival and the homeostasis of neuronal cells and the neural cells functions. This is a, basically mm -hmm. the, why the mitochondria is in the neuronal cells. And then here is the, the ATP molecules. So, one basically relays in neuronal cells. These neuronal cells required about 1.6 pro, uh, 10 to power 5 ATP molecules. This is a huge the number of molecules for one basically to release another neurons. The other one is the uh, action potentials. Sorry, action potentials in need this amount of ATP, this action potential is here. And then, you know, the basically release is here. So the overall, in these neuronal cells, they need a lot of ATP, and this ATP generated by the mitochondria. That's why the mitochondria role is very important in neuronal cells. And then dive into the, the data. This is the data, and then this also they uh, the, uh, they display the, this picture. This pic, uh, picture display uh, represents the CA1, CA3, and as well as LM. This is a localization, and the, uh, they use the mice, and then the mice were trained. And they compared mitochondrial functions between trained mice and the untrained mice. So uh, they biopsy from the mice, uh, mice of the SL, SLM localization, and then CA1, CA3 brand layers. And then they biopsy from this localization and performed experiment to see the mitochondrial functions. Uh, this is the normal mitochondrial function to measure the OCR, oxygen consumption rate. Here is the basal level, the gray, the, 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 uh, the, the color, <laughs> yeah, and the green color. And then this is the basal level of OCR starting point, and that oligomycin is inhibitor of the mitochondria, and that decrease ATP level. After that, they add the FCCP, the uncomfortable uh, inhibitor the drug, and then got a suddenly high expression of the high OCR rate, and then 
they add the antimycin and the lotan on the complex one three uh, complex one in the inhibitor and they got the low OCR rate. This is a normal the mitochondria functions using the the seahorse uh, or OCR, yeah, seahorse to detect the OCR. And then the white color is untrained and then the gray color is a trained mice and they compared the OCR. You see the yeah, this is a normal um the typical OCR experiment data, and then you see the trained and the untrained. At the same time, there are several index to measure the mitochondrial function. One is the OCR, and the other one is ATP, and the last one is the maximum OCR rate. So they used three different index of mitochondrial function data. One is the basal level of the OCR, the other one is ATP, and then the last one is the maximum OCR rate. So uh, this is the data for the OCR rate of the basal level. Uh, you know, the white color is untrained and then gray color is trained. The basal level of the OCR is uh, trained, a uh, trained mice has got a high level of OCR uh, from the basal level, but when they treat the oligomycin, and then you can see the the trained mice has got a low ATP, but the yeah, low ATP in here, and then uh, they measured the ATP trained ATP ring. You know the uh, uh, you can see the trained ATP ring. And untrained ATP linked. This is the there's the gap from here. So they got the trained mice. Trained mice has got the high ATP linked compared to the untrained ATP linked. Untrained mice of the ATP linked. And then the maximal OCL or the trained mice is higher than the untrained mice. And in the method sections, they calculate how to make uh, the ATP and the basal level of OCR and the maximum level of OCR in the method sections. But that was a little bit confused. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't understand 100% perfectly. <laughs> anyway, and the, yeah, if I told you, uh, are you from SL, SLM, or CA1, CA3. So this is a synthetic layer. Synthetic layer, you know, there are a lot of mitochondria. If I show you the, here is a synthetic layer, synapton, so you can guess there are a lot of mitochondria to release the vesicles. And then neuronal transmitter. So uh, here is a synthetic layer. Synthetic layer has got the uh, high amount of the mitochondrial function using the OCR measurement that compared to the trained and the untrained. For CA1 cell body, but there is no any function differences because the, you know, the, I think the CA1 body is like this area. So the cell body area and the synapton area, there are different mitochondrial number and the different mitochondrial functions. So in this paper, they said the CA1 cell body, they don't have got any different of mitochondrial functions by OCR measurement. <laughs> right. And then here is another one. There are several biopsy localization. One is the CA3 cell body, and then uh, uh, post layer, and the synaptic layer. And then this is the mitochondrial functions. They a mitochondrial mass, they use a complex one, complex two, and then three, four, the expression of proteins to see the mitochondrial mass. You see the CA3 cell body or posterior or this area, they don't have got any difference between trained and untrained mitochondrial function, such as OCR. In the OCR, basal level ATP link and the maximal of the OCR, we cannot see, we couldn't see the any differentiation, uh, difference. And then this is the post area also. And then that 
they got the, this control. This is a, a, the experiment to uh, to see to use a, the control. So the control is no, I think is no issues here. And they use a mark trained. And then from JKIM, this is the uh, mitochondria mass because the uh, you know the uh, saturated synthase activity. This is a complex one related protein expression, and uh, there is a complex two protein expression. They using the SDHB, which is a succinate dehydrogenase. This is the protein for the complex two and the complex three, complex five. Uh, they use a cytochrome C and ATP synthase to see the complex three and the four uh, protein expressions. Uh, you know, the untrained and the trained mice, you cannot see the, uh, the complex one protein expression difference and two, three, four. So they suggest that the, you know, the mitochondria mass, it looks very similar, but mitochondria function is very different. So I don't understand what the mitochondria mass and the mitochondria function connections. So just usually I think, you know, the High number of mitochondria induce the high mitochondria energy or mitochondria function. So in this case, uh, so far I was a little bit confused. And then, oh, this next experiment. This is the next experiment, and uh, they isolated hepo uh, synaptosomes from the trained and the untrained mice. This is the uh, synaptosomes of the neuronal cells. And then you can see the pre-synapse, and then this is a post-synapse. And then pre-synapse contained high number of mitochondria at the same time, the SV. These are synaptic vector proteins. So there's a synaptosomes, and then the, they cut, they biopsy this area, and then using the EM image, then see that this is a synaptosomes, and in the synapse, Synaptosomes, there is the mitochondria, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they perform the wave symbol analysis to see the synaptosomes. This synaptosomes contains SV2, SV2 protein and uh, TOM20 proteins. It means that, that isolated is very well. But mitochondria isolations, they don't contain SV2. So, so uh, they, and then, they, uh, they show the, uh, any, the isolation of the synaptosome is good. And then there is the OCL uh, experiment. If I told you the OCL in trained mice has got the high rate compared to the untrained in synaptosomes. And then from these synaptosomes, uh, they measured the basal OCL, ATP linked, and the maximal, maximum OCL. Any trained mice has got the higher rate compared to the untrained. But you know, that data represents the co-localization of the SV2 and the mitochondria. You can see that uh, this is a merge area, and then we see the untrained and then trained mice. The localization looks very similar. So. It means the uh, number of mitochondria is synaptom from untrained mice or trained mice is very similar based on this uh, this data. And then they wonder so why the number of mitochondria is not so different, and that they used the TLP1 inhibitor. As you know, the, the TLP1 is related with mitochondria fission proteins. So when we got the high number, uh, high expression of TLP1, we can get the increased number of mitochondria. So this uh, increased number of mitochondria because of the TLP1, it means the reduced size of mitochondria and the the, this reduced size of mitochondria can increase energy production. And then, yeah, this is a 
the function of TIP1, TIP1 is required for patients in mitochondria. So they used TIP1 inhibitor, such as MDIBI1. So they treat this uh, TIP1 inhibitor into the trained or untrained mice, a uh, trained mice. The blue color represents the trained mice, and then see the OCR rate is the high compared to the black line. This black line is the trained plus uh, TIP1 inhibitor treatment. So when they got the inhibition of TIP1 functions, they have low rate of OCR in of the mitochondria. And at the same time, uh, they checked the data level of the OCR and the ATP link. You know, the this blue color is the vehicle and the black color is the TRP1 inhibitor. So when they treat the TRP1 with the trained mice, they got the low expression of the basal OCR or ATP link compared to the trained mice. And the maximum OCR rate also lower than the only vehicle. But in this mice also, for the localization of the mitochondria between trained mice and the trained mice plus TRP1 inhibitor looks very similar. So still, uh, I guess the number of mitochondria in the neuronal cell in synapton area is very similar to the trained mice and the untrained mice. But what makes a mitochondrial function high? So it means that probably small a TIP1 divided into small number of mitochondria, and then this small number of mitochondria caused by TIP1 functions make high energy. But we are still, I don't know. <laughs> and this is another experiment to use another inhibitor of the TIP1 to confirm the previous TIP1 inhibitor drug, and then. This is also very similar. There is a basal level and the maximum level of the OCR rate and the co-localization also. And the ATP linked also, the trained and the non-trained, untrained mice look so similar. So, yeah, still, yeah, same interpretation of this data. And the trained mice has got the high ratio of OCR or high function of mitochondria from this data and from this data, I can assume. And then the finally, yeah, they use a TATP110, the TLP1 uh, inhibitor also. So this is the, the memory experiment. This is the final PPT and then they trained the mice and then they added the TLP1 inhibitor to look for the memory. Long, this long-term memory, the, the blue color is the vehicle and the black color is the inhibitor of TRP1 and the gray color also inhibitor of TRP1. And then when they inhibit the TRP1 functions, the memory, long-term memory uh, is decreased of both uh, this drug and then that drug. So TRP1 is important to the number of mitochondria at the same time, the important to increase the function of mitochondria and then this all this function of mitochondria positively affect the long-term memory of mice, of lead. So uh, there's the conclusions. So we can assume the, uh, this synaptic area of the hippo, hippocampi is important because there are a lot of the mitochondria and then this mitochondria also increase the mitochondrial function to release any vesicle or to make any transporter the release. And another one is a training mice, uh, also the uh, training also associated increased respirations in hyposynaptosomes. And another one is a, there is a DRP1 function. This DRP1, if I told you, increased uh, any mitochondria respirations or any mitochondria ATP productions. 
to improve the long-term peer memory. So this is the, <laughs> so the paper from every data. Oh, and then it's hopefully you understand uh, uh, what I'm present the, this one. But basically, yeah, in neuronal cells, this is my first time the study. So, but this paper is very help, helpful. I know the some structure of neurons, and then, yeah, something interesting point and the. Okay.